Hello YouTube. Uh, this is really a continuation of um, the last video, which I'll put a link to up here. Uh, we have gotten a new set of uh, lifters, a whole new set. I'm only going to replace the one uh, that was collapsed. This is the one that was collapsed and I'll show you a picture of that. If you look at this lifter, the plunger inside of it is right up against the seat. There's no gap there at all. If you look at this lifter, the plunger is still down in the bore and the receipt is loose and up here at the top. So this lifter is stuck down in the bore. But let's move forward. A little lube on the end of the push rod. And down into the lifter. And a little assembly loop on the end of this push rod. A little assembly lube on the end of the valve. Drop the rockers on. Flat side up, dome side down. Put the adjuster nut on, and now I'm going to have to move the motor in order to turn it over. What happened there? That's another collapsed lifter. Son of a gun! <coughs> well, I have just found another collapsed lifter. And the debate now in my mind is whether I should just change all the lifters out for the new set that came. I can't believe it. I've gone through um, three cams. It took two cams to get a third cam that was good. One lifter set and one set of lifters was bad and now I have another one. I don't think too much of this uh, Elder Brock. That's my opinion. We have decided to take all the lifters that came in the package out and replace them with the lifters that came to replace the one collapsed lifter because I actually found another one. Um, this set is came in a black box and the other set came in a white box. Uh, the only thing I can think is that it's from a different manufacturer and maybe I'll have more luck. I found another difference in between the uh, lifters that I'm putting in now and the lifters that was sent with the kit. The one sent with the kit, the crossbar says Edelbrock on it. And the one that was sent as replacement says Comp Cam on it. I have much more confidence in Comp Cam because we know Edelbrock is uh, just buying those from some company. Um, some white box company. So I'm happy to have the comp cam and we'll continue with the installation. Once again, Elderbrock has taken me in a direction that I haven't gone before. They're going to essentially contact cement the intake gaskets to the head. Let me read the directions. Apply Elderbrock gasket cinch sealant part number 9300 to both cylinder head flanges and to the cylinder head side of the gaskets, allow to air dry and attach the intake gaskets. So, and I've opened it up, it smells like con contact cement. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow directions. We're going to wipe this down with uh, uh, paint thinner, and then we're going to contact cement the intake gasket to the heads. Okay.
So we gotta allow this to dry. Number four, do not use cork or rubber end seals. Use RTV sealant sealer instead. Apply a quarter inch high bead across the end block and end seal surface. Overlap the intake gasket at the four corners. This method will eliminate end seal seepage. Install the intake manifold and hold down bolts on applications with Vortec or ETEC cylinder heads torque all the manifold bolts two steps by the sequence shown in figure three to 11 foot pounds. Install the intake manifold and hold down bolts on applications with Vortec or E-TEC cylinder heads that's Elderbrox heads. Torque all the manifold bolts in two steps by the sequence shown in figure three to 11 foot pounds. So I'm going to start at six, and the sequence is uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just what you would think. So um, one, we'll go one. One, two. So we're going to go across. And now we'll go to 12. Or 11. 11. And the intake is bolted on. We're getting to the end of this, so we're going to have to go start working on the truck again. I believe it's time to get these pesky rags out of here that I left in here. That was a stupid thing to do. There's one. And now we've got to go fishing for the other one. Oh, there we go. No more rags in the intake. Now, I do like Elderbrock's approach to timing the engine. And I do have a note here. This cam is a cast cam and requires a cast distributor drive gear, not a bronze, but a cast one, stock. Turn the engine over in the direction of rotation until the number one intake valve closes and continue until the pointer on the front cover is approximately five degrees before top dead center. See figure one for firing order. So what they're gonna do is they're positioning the harmonic balancer five degrees advance uh, with the number one cylinder ready to fire. Reinstall the distributor with the rotor pointing towards number one terminal in the cap and with the distributor housing in its original position. If the distributor will not drop down all the way into the flange of the manifold, it will be necessary to align the distributor shaft with the oil pump drive. Slowly rotate the engine until the distributor drops down against the manifold. Well, then continue turning until two complete revolutions are completed and the timing marks once again come to five degrees before top dead center. Okay, we can do that. Okay, so after fiddling with it, what we have, this is top dead center right here. This notch is top dead center. And we've got the timing mark about five degrees before top dead center. So it's five degrees advanced. And now we're going to drop the distributor in. 
So this black mark right here represents the number one terminal and when the distributor is now dropped down into the motor, we want this rotor to be pointed right at the number one. Now, the problem is, is that the oil pump is not going to line up, so it's not going to let us do it. Okay, so now it's dropped down into the oil pan, and we want number one to be over here. Number one can't be over there. Number one's got to be there. So we're 180 degrees out. Now I found that if you do this, you can walk it around. There we go, we're going. So with the distributor all the way down in the intake, and the rotor pointing to number one, if we put the spark plug wires on right, number one goes to number one cylinder, Number one cylinder is going to be six degrees advanced and that should be a good place to try to start it. Now I will pull that distributor out again to run oil and I'll just time it again. But it's nice to know that it is timed. So that's it for now. There'll be more later.